<laughs> we, so, we'll start rolling. I actually wanted to meet you for a while now because I yeah. see, obviously, you guys are the face off. If it wasn't for you guys, no disrespect to your whoever you work for, but there was no interest in reading the paper and that yeah. before. Since you guys, man, I'm telling you. Kind of helped there were 12 people shot in a couple of months. Yeah, but the way you cover it, yeah. you're a fucking good man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Welcome to Coom City. I'm Josh Hanrahan. I'm Mark Murray. Moz, this is a little bit different today. We've got a guest in the studio. Yeah. He's uh, someone who's very well known to many different people. Firstly, he was a, a bikey with the Nomads. Yeah. Now he's a, a TikTok star and an Instagram star. His name is Muhammad Muri Tajua. That's right. Muri, thanks for, thanks for coming. For, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I'll just run through for those who aren't aware of you, I guess how you've popped onto the scene from the beginning over the years and you can tell me what you think. So probably the first time you, your name was in the headlines was when you were convicted of, of killing a young man. And, That's correct. Yeah. And that was at, Chiswick, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah back in what, 2006, that, yeah. 2000, yeah. around then. Were and you then still in school? Was I still at yeah. school? Yeah, I was, might have still been in primary school back then. <laughs> wow. And then obviously you became a major part of the Nomads biker gang through your family. Yep. The, you're related to the Ibrahims. Yep. Uh, as a cousin. So yourself and your brother Sleeman were, were high ranking <clears throat> Nomads bikies. Since then, you, you did, how long did you do in jail? Oh fuck, a long time mate. I, I, don't, I couldn't give you the exact Six, bit. seven years or? So I, I got done for the manslaughter and then I got breached on a parole, I think. I was on restrictions. I wasn't allowed to talk to Tong and Sam and my cousin Sam. Non-associations. Yeah. So Tong and Sam, you weren't allowed to associate with him. Now, Tong and Sam had been next to John Ibrahim and up at the cross for a decade or so. He, he has a cult following, doesn't he, Tong yeah. and Sam? As being in the crew I was in, Tong and Sam was assigned to us from John. Right. Tong and Sam was one of us. He still is one of us. Yeah. I still see him to this day. And he's one of the hardest men that ran these streets. So that was so, when I first met your brother. Was this the consorting yeah. laws? Yeah. Which you, you weren't probably around, but the consorting laws were brought in about 212, 213. They were used to basically break the bikies, weren't they, mm. the consorting laws. So two known felons with criminal records with, uh, had done an indictable offence with two years or more, I think it was. And if there was three of it, that was called consorting. So literally, even me or a clean skin sitting with two known felons, you could get charged with consorting. But what they used to do, they would um, they charge brothers for consorting with each other. The law. I got done for consorting my brother. Really? Yeah, and all the first, my brother was the first person to be charged with consorting. Right, and that's that, that was the, that was the introduction of Strike Force Raptor, yeah. which is now the Raptor Squad, and and really the you know the at that point was trying to bring down the bikies now. We should say, how long have you been out of the bikey life now, Moody? Five years. Five years. Yeah, I'm proud of that too. Five years of being yeah. on the straight and narrow, just been doing social media. Yeah, but you've got a bit of a, a boxing fight coming up, which is which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a different turn of events, but yeah. It is. So but whereabouts do you think you'll be trying to have a fight? Oh, I, find a... I think in Melbourne is, is the place because I'm pretty sure with a colourful background like myself... You'll I'll, struggle. Here I'll struggle, but... To get a licence to box to... for people... Correct. Right. So, so if, if they don't accept it, and then we're going to go to Dubai. Right. Fight. Well, fight there. There's some big names. Coming. Who are you fighting? Do, have you got an uh, opponent? Yeah, the leader of a uh, prison gang called Willing to Kill. The oh, founder. Wow. Yeah. He. Uh, we went to school together, and I don't remember him from jail. So he was in a different section. I was a leader of a notorious prison gang. This one. And he just. I think he just held a grudge against me. And so he called me out. For yeah. those who are listening, Woody's just lifted up his jacket to show off a, yes. a tattoo. Yes. And there's no weapons either. Well, got oh, is it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, um, now, you, Tony, you said Notorious there. So I founded Notorious in prison, and he founded um, WTK. It's called Willing to Kill. Can we name him? That's all right. Yeah, Nathan Patterson. All right. Now, uh, just going back, Notorious were basically, from what I was told, they then became... A street crew. A street crew. They called them the the bike the, the Nike bikies, didn't they? Called them that, yeah, they but um, notorious were almost it was like your cousin John. He it was almost used, weren't they, to help protect his interests up at the cross? Is not that right almost, or not? That's what it was. It was, what it was. So. John said he had his own Raptor squad before Raptor. He believes Raptor <laughs> stole the idea from him. That's how the cops got Raptor. He saw what John was doing with Notorious, yeah. 
and because he said no one was looking after his clubs. The, you know, the commas was seriously trying to take over his clubs, the and cross, he said yeah. he had to get protection to for his business interests. Is that right? Would you say? I don't talk about other crews, but no, Notorious yeah, was right. formed to look after my cousins. Yeah. Okay. And it's I started interesting. in prison with all my criminal mates. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think for the modern day person out there who's come across you on social media, it can probably no be offense, pretty... No offence, but I haven't seen any of his social media. Mo so. Moz has barely seen himself on I social haven't media. Really. I, I, at your age, I don't, I don't, I'm not surprised, you know what I mean? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I'm easily intimidated, or else I'd have a go at you. I told you my one professional career, yeah. Padstow Police Boys Club. You got a second round. Yeah. the second round. <laughs> Mate, that guy went on to be under 10 state champion. Well, then, yes. uh, you know what? I should not. Yeah, I've got a fight coming up. Might be a good thing that, eh? Hey? Give me a bit of street cred. Yeah, anyway, sorry. But my, my point was that for everything people say on social media, you've actually got a, a fascinating life story. Um,. Take me back to growing up as a young kid, if we can just quickly run through your life in a, in a few minutes. What was it so, like? I grew up with the Abraham family, so our mums and sisters. So since I was a young kid, I was like a prince off the street automatically. I was able to do what I wanted. So a lot of people would like to take credit for their own life, where they end up. But if it wasn't for my cousins, I wouldn't have been able to step on the toes I stepped on. It made life a lot easier having... Cousins who were notorious, like they were in their time, they were the king and prince, Sam and John, and I was the younger cousin. And I just started, I was living with them and I just looked up to them and I started being a criminal since I was a kid. When was your first interaction with police and the law? Fucking Roger Rogerson, when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, wow. Used to come around looking for Sam and that when Sam was doing weekend detention. And I didn't know he was a corrupt cop, I didn't know nothing like that. I just thought he was one of Sam's boys. Fuck, I didn't know, I didn't give it too much thought. But he used to come around, where's your fucking, where's Sam? Come inside, I remember I was a kid, he'll come inside, have a coffee. And I was young, but I was fucking real young, but I remember her. And then later on, I remember the name, I thought, fucking what? Yeah, so that's the first interaction I had. We were, and a few other dirty coppers used to come around looking for Louis Bayo and my cousin Sam. No, that's right. Yeah, it, I think Roger at that point wasn't a police officer. But he was, bring, he was like running with coppers. He still was, even yeah. when he got out of the force. He was still very powerful. With yeah, that. so I'm pretty sure that, that yeah. at those times he would come around, he would have two coppers with him. Yeah, but wow. he wasn't a copper. But he was the very close link. to Louis Bayer. Yeah, so yeah. Louis, yeah, yeah, Louis was real yeah. close to my cousin back in the day. Louis started my cousin. So well, Louis was actually, he was the king of the cross, wasn't he? Louis yeah. and Billy, they controlled the yeah. cross back, yeah. along with George Freeman. Freeman, yeah. His kids were, were under my wing for a bit. And then your first time in jail, was that for the manslaughter? No, nah, so I was falsely accused when I was 15 of uh, nine kidnappings around Bondi. I never did those crimes, but I was blocked up in juvie. I ended up getting found not guilty. And then later on, I ended up being again falsely accused and charged with three drive-by shootings. Sat on remand for 15 and a half months, got found not guilty. Got out for five and a half months and then got done for killing all mate. That's actually Robin Nassau, isn't it? Yeah, he's Rob. the victim, wasn't he? And yeah. he's the person you feel a bit sorry for. You're like, I feel sorry for him, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. That was, uh, for, for, get me wrong. Stuck his finger up the wrong Stuck his finger person. up the wrong, outside but, DCMs. Is that, yeah, it just, but, and it, sounds, it, was, it just got out of control. Wasn't yeah, it? he didn't, there was no plan to kill him. Right, no. Nah. The guy was a, like a harmless guy. Yeah. But he drove, people don't know the story, so. Yeah. I was running. DCMs? The, the yes. street. Yep. The street boys. And this is what I started over. So I'm standing like that next to John, and I see this cunt pull up in front of DCM in a Saab convertible and stood up and goes, John, you fucking dog, and went like to John. And then that night, it was New Year's Eve. So I used to run the Sleeve Masters tattoo shop at King's Cross. Oh, right, yeah. So I went there, closed it for the night because I was off my fucking head, and I kicked everyone out. And then I laid down on the chair, and I switched the lights off, and this guy was destined to die, eh? Came over to the shop knowing that I get rent from there, and smashed the window, and I was, I, I've woken up, what the fuck was that? I've, I've seen the broken the window, I've come out, I said, you little dog, and I slapped him. And he, obviously, he got left there, and then a couple of hours later, he's G'd himself up, and rocked up to where the party was, and buzzed the buzz, and said, come down. A long story short, we go downstairs, and... Is this in the underground car park? Yeah, he dies, and his brother 
Because he, he, he hit, he hit, a, I never hit, hit a vein or I never hit no, it. No, you didn't. Right. He was hit with, in the leg. With the knife, yeah, that, and, and he bled out. And to be honest, it was, I never knew my mate had a knife on him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My mate's dead now. I so it was you and Sleeman did the time, didn't you? With yeah, I could talk about it. He's dead now, yeah. so I could talk about it openly. He killed fucking Robin. Yeah, yeah. I plead guilty to it. Yeah, you did. Because what can we do? And jail for you then, um, what did that look like? Was it something... It was a fucking paradise, mate. It was the best thing ever. I just realised this is where I'm going to make my name in jail. <laughs> I'm going really? To, yeah. You can't have credit on the street if you're not in the prison system credible. Right. Do you need to go to prison to have a name outside? Does yes. It, it really helps. Think about it this way. See, I was jailed for things i never done. Yeah. But anyhow, think about it this way. If you're on the street, right, never been in jail, nothing. How can you respect a bloke that you don't know if he'll squeal if he gets faced with 30 year sentence? So you're saying if somebody hasn't gone to jail, you, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know whether you can trust them. You don't know either to way. keep their mouth Listen. shut. <laughs> so so what, do you, what do you think now, looking back, I know you, you just said before you don't have any sympathy for what happened. Obviously, you did your time. I have sympathy for the victim that died. Okay. Did we, you think you were going to... Get, die on the street? Yeah. I still feel I'm going to die on yeah, the street. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I think I'm going to die on the street now more oh. than I want back then. Why? I, I, how do I put it here? Past sins or? If you knew my sins, you'd run away. <laughs> we come two different walks of life, so yeah, I understand. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You're very clear. You don't want to talk about really what's been happening on Sydney's streets mm. in the last couple of years. I'm sure you know some of the individuals that we talk about and write about and, I know and of some of the individuals who have died you know i know all of them yeah what, what do you just generally then um what, i know both sides okay what do you make of it all and are you glad that you're out of that that life yeah it's a, it's, a, it's i don't like seeing i know both sides i'm not close with neither right i'm not on terms where we hang out and i don't know them that well but I always love the people from my area more than other areas. That's my people. Yeah. Regardless if I'm not a part of it. That's where your loyalty is. The Maryland's crew. Maryland's boys. So yeah. I always have love for the Maryland's boys because that's my area. And I'll, I'll tell you straight out, I don't know who's responsible for what, so I don't really want to talk too much on it. And it's <laughs> confusing to people, isn't it, about who's shot who for why and, and old, like some murders are... Uh, Six to ten years old for vengeance. Yeah, but you aren't hit the they? nail on the head. What makes you so sure it's them killing each other? Yeah. And there'll be we know throw off. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I don't know who's killing who, who's doing what. I don't ask people these questions. I don't sit and say to someone, "How you been? How you been? Like, <laughs> who'd you not? Did you kill someone last week? <laughs> Fuck! I'm not that stupid. Next minute, I'm gonna end up dead. You know what I mean? So I don't know who's killing who, but I could tell you this: I don't think it, the picture is as it seems. In all this stuff, no, the not streets. all of it. No, you know what I mean, I, 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 I do don't you think, think it'll ever? It, will there always? I get asked this all the time, mainly because I'm old. But and I covered the the gang wars in the yeah. 80s. Do you think there'll always be gang wars and always be people being knocked? You better hope so, because you're not going to have a fucking <laughs> job if there isn't. So we, you better hope so. But I think, yeah, I think yeah. There, there's, there's always going to be crime, mate. Let me tell you. And there's I, too I, much cash, is, but it, it's, it's not, not just about the it's cash. It's not the cash, is it? It's you about. Know what it's about? I tell you, without being disrespectful and making you feel uncomfortable, but usually the driving force behind these wars, I'll tell you why. Everyone wants to be somebody. And the more you write about someone, the, is the more you're pissing another person off. And I tell you, you don't say it like that, but I tell you, it's like that. And well, I'll tell you something else. All the gangs are powerful. You always write it as if it's one, one stronger. Yeah, yeah. One might be more stronger, but don't ever underestimate any gang because... Anyone can hire a killer. You know what I mean? It's just some gangs are fortunate to have more money than the others. Yeah. So you don't understand how these streets work. The streets is not based on your fighting ability or how many boys you got. It's based on how much money you got and how many killers you got on side that you can pay. You are kind of right. I understand what you're saying about the coverage we give. Yeah. And we, we, we fight with that in our heads occasionally. We stopped mentioning who had contracts out on them because... You, it it makes well, I don't think we often. Re I wouldn't think we would report things that most people in that world wouldn't already know. No, I understand that. Yeah. But you got to understand. You put. You know when you report someone is the most powerful person, you put a target on his head from his own people. 
everyone has well, jealousy so mate let me tell you i guarantee you my life on it used to if you were the same age is be jealous of each other who's a better reporter but you don't have because you respect him so there's no jealousy between you two but i do know if you were the same age you will be 100 percent he wants to be better than you and better than him that's how that's, and that's what happens in, in in the underworld in the underworld so you're labeling it's some, same cruise yes you're so right. you're labeling a guy who's mid-30s for example hypothetically about name and names right he's the king then you've got another guy that's got a girlfriend and he's got a image and pride yeah. he starts feeling am i underneath this bloke no crews ever sit in the meeting so i'm the boss no crew yeah use label people bosses no. if, if bike is here but okay. client families this thing don't exist it comes down to who the media label one guy might have authority yeah that's and <clears throat> they love him and he's a good speaker and good leader some people are leaders, but the way aren't they? You, but we don't we don't can I just say to clarify, things, we don't we don't choose it, so we obviously but you go after the police the police know fuck all about fuck all the yeah. police know nothing about nothing if they knew let me tell you something the police of all due respect when i say this i don't piss them off they target people like me that's fucking doing tiktok they kicked my door in a few months ago i'm on the floor i looked at him and i said what did you get out of this he goes what do you mean you're a fucking gangster okay you're obviously a disgrace to your badge if you think i'm involved in these streets if you think i'm a powerful figure on these streets you don't know what's going on buddy mm. <laughs> and as I said, before we started this we had a little chat about how you had a little interaction with deb wallace who used to be one of the first members yeah. bosses of the gang squad yeah she's crazy mate she she, she, yeah, she, as said, she went head to head with me yeah <laughs> well, so this all, is uh, they call it the gang buster yeah. she used to get her out and deb wallace People didn't know she's the boss of, of the gang squad and had wrapped her. She was one, and she'd get around in these bright j jumpsuits. <laughs> she'd wear a, a high heels. Yeah, and she'd go on raids. Yeah, she does And, it, and you know what? Uh, that photo, you, it was the nomads. And do you remember? She's stepping on the... And, and, the, and there was all the guys lined up on their stomachs <clears> with the ties behind. Me? Yeah. And she's walking past. Yeah. She and she's got her stilettos on as she's walking. And she goes, met my boys from Raptor. And all the guys are lying on yeah, their stomachs. Yeah, it was my birthday. <laughs> it was my 34th birth uh, birthday. Yeah, she got me good. But man. you guys sorted it, didn't it? That's right. right. She came to my fucking cafe. I got a lot of respect for her. Yeah, I know. She you. came down with no one and confronted me. On her own? Oh, she had this guy over. I think she was like some guy she was oh, dating. Right, yeah. But yeah. not a hard cunt. And yeah. she came up to me. I promised to God. And... She's just doing her fucking job. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm walking around with a set of colours on. It's her duty to yeah. put me on the floor. She's actually a nice lady, to be honest yeah. with you. She's, very, yeah. Yeah, very strong lady, very stern, straight. And very, she yeah. ran her force pretty well. I was surprised she stood down. Yeah, she decided just to, to retire. She she done a lot for this country. This, you can't shy away from She She took down the bikies, mm. and I was one of them. Yeah. She... Darren. Yeah, yeah, Darren Beachy who, and Dave Adney. They were the, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They were the driving Adney. force behind Raptor and Deb was there just to make sure yeah. and they took that the these guys were allowed to do yeah. yeah, And this was, a, again, a little bit before your time, Raptor and the Middle Eastern crime squad gangs and the bikies, Raptor smashed them. Did I tell you what they did to me my last time I threw my colours in? I was eating at a restaurant called Middle Feast and I was with a girl and I had four soldiers guard in the restaurant while I was eating and then Beachy blocked off the whole marinade like the whole area I don't know what's going on I'm eating this girl walks in blocks off opens the door walks you just can ask him this is when I left sat on the table he goes to the young lady you got one second get the fuck out of here she left and he goes to me straight out he goes you're not gonna have a girlfriend you're not gonna have nothing you need to fucking leave this life you got one chance throw your colors in he goes I'm gonna ruin your life and then serve me with this terrorist thing you know the terror watch list? Yeah. I was on the terror watch list. I go, what's that? He goes, you're not on the bike list no more. He goes, this is a different ball game for you. And gave it to me. And I read it, I gave it to my lawyer. And he goes, mate, you're fucked. He goes, they're going to put you away. He goes, if you stay wearing those colours, there's no ifs or buts. He goes, what the guidelines are, they had like 15 um, things if I breached. I couldn't, I, there was no way for me to be biking no more. And I looked at all the boys around me. And then, yeah, I, I ended up throwing, I, ended up throwing my I burned my colours. I posted it on live burning them. And left. Moody, you just mentioned colours a few times. For those out there who don't know what you're talking about, just explain what bikey colours are. So you become a hangaround with no patches. After three months, it gets voted on if you're going to become a nominee. And you get two bars, which is, say, for example, Nomads. Nomads Australia is two bars. Yep. And then three months later, you go for your back Australia MC. And this is all bottom on rocker. your leather vest. Yeah, so the front is a nominee, just gets two patches in Nomads Australia, no area, nothing. 
Three months later, if you pass the, all the checks, you get Australia MC, bottom rocker and the middle thing. And then it's an undetermined time, comes the middle patch and the rest of your patches. Yeah. It normally takes 12 months. Looking at photos of you before you came in, notice yours is covered in patches. What is yeah, that? Yeah, every patch. What does that tell you? Some are earned. We're going to have to wrap it up yeah, you're right. soon. Yeah. And you're a father now? Yeah, I've got a young son. I don't well, talk, uh, almost three. I don't talk to my oh. son. I never bring my son up in anything. I better like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. But this gangster life, mate, I tell you, it's rubbish. Oh, I'm right? in the process now getting clearance to oh, talk yeah. to these youngsters and tell them I rose great. to the highest level in this world and it got me nowhere. So the trouble is people still look at you now and... Well, they also look at it see you almost as successful because you've got credibility because you did all that shit. I survived. And you survived. <laughs> and I'm free. And how many of mates didn't survive? Fuck, I've got no mates left. No, but I'm saying how many died or, 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 or all locked up? All my closest all. friends, are either, you've seen me always doing posts saying rest in peace, this person, that person. Yeah. So it's either they're dead or in jail. I've got no friends out of you. Yeah, That's what goes on the truth. Mate, I could sit here and listen to your stories yeah. all day. You've, you've touched on things from your perspective in a way that I think for listeners out there provides an insight that we can't provide every week. I oh, think yeah, it's great that you're going uh, to. And you do it very respectfully. I yeah. think. And, but you know you have to. Do you have any regrets? Your, your episode's not long enough. <laughs> Is that sum it up for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll do it. <laughs> all right, okay. we got to do the wrap up. I'll okay. do a wrap up, yeah. How do you wrap it up? <laughs> so, oh, he, uh, does, he does all this stuff because I forget. So. Yeah. It's, uh, thanks for listening to Crim City. I'm Josh Hanrahan. I'm Mark Murray. Moody, thank you. I'm Moody Toujour. Yeah. You sure are. Uh, yeah. You can catch us weekly on TikTok every day at dailytelegraph.com.au and in the newspaper. And you get this podcast wherever you get it. And hopefully, Moody will have more fascinating guests like you coming up. I'm sure he's always got a good channel. He's know what yeah. he's doing. Thanks, brother. Yeah.